What's up guys, I'm Jacob Owens for the Buff Nerds and today we got Will with me again, special guest and today we're going to talk to you about how to make a living off videography and making videos. Alright guys, so we're going to run through a bunch of tips and pieces of advice that we've taken from our careers um, and how we've made it in the filmmaking industry or video production industry and have made a living off of it and we continue to make a living off of it and just give you all those tips, those pieces of advice so you can do it too, right? <laughs> so really quickly, if you don't know much about me, I'm a filmmaker uh, from Arizona. I live in Los Angeles now. I've worked on some of the biggest music videos, uh, commercials, and different projects that you've probably seen. Some of you probably haven't seen, but a lot of you have definitely seen. Uh, Will is also a DP in LA and has shot a lot of music videos um, for yeah. Khalid or Khalid. Actually, yeah, I shot forever. OT Genesis. Uh, I've shot for Hit the Quan, or yeah, Hit the Quan, OT Genesis, Chameleon Air, uh, Tyga. I've edited video, so we've done a lot Is that of a stuff. Video for me, no, Tyga. No, no, he does look like Tyga though. <laughs> um, but anyways, we've you know done a lot of stuff, and we've made this our career. So now we're gonna get into how you guys can make it a career too. All right, so first, number one piece of advice I would say is build a reel. Yeah. Um, so you have to have a reel to get work. People want to see the work you can do, so you're going to want to like work on a bunch of projects and build together, whether you're a director, a director's reel, if you're a DP, a DP reel, so that you can put that out there on your website or the internet, YouTube, wherever, and send it to people. like. So they can see your work and know you can do the job. Yeah, your reel is pretty much your audition tape. So you want to make it hot, you want to make it fresh, and you want to make it you. Don't it's, try to it's basically a, a video resume to make sure like the client sees you can do the job and they want you to do it. Now, uh, you might be asking, how do you get a reel? Well, early on, this leads us into tip number two. Early on when I first started my filmmaking career, I started with Futuristic. Kyle Sampson and some local artists um, just around the valley here in Arizona but in LA and I would reach out to artists I would shoot music videos for free um, I would just go out shoot music videos because I was trying to build a reel that I could use to pitch to other artists so I went around I made all these music videos I would just be like hey I'll shoot you this video for free I'll shoot you this video for free I wasn't getting paid and once I had a solid reel then I started reaching out to different artists and companies and saying like hey look here's my reel here's what I can do here's what I would charge are you guys interested in a video do you want me to do your next video and I would use that reel that I put together um, to get jobs. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of work off of my reel too. I've actually been in competition with other DPs, other directors, and you know, because my reel, well, they liked my reel more than theirs, I got the job. So it's really cool and really important that you make that reel as best as you can. So that kind of leads into the next tip, which is reach out. Early on, that's how I got a lot of my jobs, is I would just reach out. I would send emails, I would send messages on Facebook. Instagram wasn't really um, in full swing for like booking jobs back yeah. then, but now I get a lot of jobs booked off Instagram. I'll message people on Instagram, they'll message me um, for video work, uh, but you wanna actively reach out. I would reach out all the time, every day I would sit down and spend time sending out emails with my reel and try and put as many lines, think of it like fishing, right? Mm -hmm. So the pond, the lake, or whatever you're fishing at is where all the clients are, the fish are the clients, and if you're throwing out one reel, what are your chances of catching a fish as opposed to throwing out 10 reels and having yeah. 10 lines sitting in the water? So the more lines that you throw out in the water, the more chances you have at a fish biting and you landing that fish, the fish being the client. So that's a good little analogy I can kind of give to, you know, let you guys know, like reaching out is important and it'll help you land more jobs. Very true. That's actually how I met this guy. Um, yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect we, example. We went to um, ASU together, but never met each other, um, but we were mutual friends on Facebook so I like this guy's work was like hey I'd like to you know work with you in person first video actually yeah. was it the chameleon chameleon he reached out to me said he wanted to help on set I was shooting a video for chameleon he came out on set helped out that's where I first met him liked him continued to just kind of stay in touch and work and and now we're out here in Arizona right now shooting a TV show and he's running second camera on the TV show because I brought him on all because he did what I reached out he reached out Reach out and touch somebody's Another little tip is if you're a freelancer, there's a bunch of different freelancing websites you can uh, sign up for. 
um, that deal with video production and film production. You can also throw up your, your skills on different sites like Craigslist or whatever, but there's a lot of different avenues. I'll try and link some stuff in the description below of websites you can go to sign up for freelancing gigs where companies will reach, you know, put a, I think like an ad out there as far as like, hey, we're looking for a person uh, that can do this. You kind of bid on it and you can throw out your reel and different things out there. So there's there's websites like that that'll allow you to kind of post your resume and your skill set online for companies and people to see and potentially hire you. Next would be get a good website and IG profile. Um, today with IG and Instagram being so popular, it kind of acts as a reel. People will go to your Instagram and right away be able to see the type of work you're doing, work you've done. It's almost like a, a, a separate website or reel for yourself. Yeah. I've booked a lot of jobs through Instagram or have had a lot of companies or people reach out to me through Instagram and book me on jobs. I think the show I'm shooting right now was because the the director of the show found me on Instagram. Yeah. So Instagram is super important. If you're trying to grow your video production business, do not set your profile to private. I just talked about that in a new Instagram uh, guide video that I just dropped. You'll find that guide in the description below as well. Uh, but don't set it to private. Your Instagram is like a website just to show off all your work. Build a good looking website. If you have a cheesy, tacky looking website, <laughs> chances are people and companies are gonna be like, eh, I don't know about this guy he, yeah. he doesn't look like he's got the quality of work i'm looking for it so make sure you build a solid website i did mine through squarespace i you use did wix yeah wix mm -hmm. wix is really easy as well all right so we come to free work now i want to make a whole separate video for this but i'm going to touch on it really quickly free work is important because it's how you connect with people and and kind of network early on like i said i shot so many free videos because i wanted to build up my reel and you never know by what job you take or free work you do that's gonna lead to some connection that in turn ends up, you know, I don't know, making your career or leading to some positive things. Yeah. Will, when he came out that day to help me on set, did I pay you? Nah. I don't think I paid nah. you, right? I didn't pay him. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just something he came out to do. Had he offered, like if he came to me and was like, hey, I, I need to be paid for this, I might not have ever talked to him again. I might not yeah. have hit him up because that's not what you know, he was coming out to just, he wanted to come out and gain experience. So don't be scared to do free work and gain experience because you never know the connections you might make. Sure. Will made a connection with me and now he's worked on countless projects with me and he's here working now. So don't be scared about that free work. I'll still do it from time to time if it's right. You know, know, know when it's right and wrong and how it can potentially benefit you. And if you think that it can benefit you, go for it. But don't think that you're above free work ever because you you're not. Yeah. So after that is practice and discipline with any, you know, uh, talent, skill set. The more you practice, the better you get. When I was in college, I would practice shooting something every day that I wasn't in school or working. I would work on how I could edit better, how I could do these kind of effects, how I could light or work my camera better. And just like with basketball or any sport, the more you play basketball or practice basketball, the better you're, the better you're gonna get. Yeah. So the more you work at something, the better you're gonna get. I don't yeah. know if you want to touch on anything. Yeah, I mean, I call I call it the Kobe mentality personally. You know, Kobe Bryant is like the perfect example of one of the best players of all time. He'd be in the gym day in and day out. He'd be in the gym before practice was over, before practice began, and after practice ended, just trying to work on his craft. And, you know, I think the same about Jacob. Right. Every time I'm with this dude, he's always working and perfecting his craft. They say it takes 10,000 hours to master something. So the more you do something, the better you're going to become. And the better you become... The more. the more the more of this that comes in. So after that is invest in yourself and in your gear. Yeah. This is super important. When I first start, when I shot my first music video with Futuristic, I didn't own a camera, but I borrowed it from a friend and I shot that video. After that video came out, I started getting hit up by local artists asking, "Oh, you do music videos? How much do you charge?" Instantly, I went out and bought a Canon T2i and I started shooting music videos. And that's how I got to where I'm at. And I started shooting all these music videos and built my career off of music videos. Had I never bought that camera, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be here. I don't know where I would be. So that's just an early testament to investing in yourself and in your gear. That's um, how I started. That's I started how with started. the T2i as well. That's a classic. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. most and most recently I bought this is Will's camera, but I bought a Red Dragon which I'm shooting on right now. Yeah. And after I bought that camera, I started getting hit up for a lot of DP jobs. People were hitting me up to shoot their projects. Um, I wasn't directing, but I was shooting their projects. And and now I'm shooting this TV show. Um, I just shot a TV show, which is on Verizon Go 90 right now, 
a few months ago I shot that and that was because I owned the camera and I had the gear to get the job done. Right. Um, it cost a lot of money up front, but I was investing in myself and in my craft and now I've made that return back and I will continue and now my work just keeps growing um, and that's all because I was investing in myself and made those you know, leaps of faith, I yeah, guess, that you need to, to make it happen. 100%. I was in the same boat. You know, I owned a 5D Mark III before this. And, you know, that's been obsolete for, what, like three, four years yeah, now since yeah. 4K became a thing. And um, ever since I bought, you know, my red Scarlet W, I've been getting work like crazy. I was able to DP a pilot for a show for Revolt TV, do multiple documentaries that are on Revolt TV now, work with some big artists like Offset from from um, yeah. the Migos, worked with Khalid, worked with tons of people just because I owned a red And that's camera. why he's here right now, honestly. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. uh, had he not owned a red, we probably would have gone with someone locally who could just shoot. Mm -hmm. um, but because he owned a red, brought him out from LA and he's running second camera. Yeah. So, you know, investing in yourself and in your gear, whether it's gear or a website or anything, marketing, mm -hmm. like investing in yourself and the craft is super important to kind of taking those next steps. Last but not least, something that is so simple <laughs> is just put your work out there. Yeah. Just put your work out there. If you don't think it's good enough, who cares? Just put it out there. You will never take those next steps if your work is not being seen by people. Yeah. If you just keep your work on your computer and you never put it out there, how, how do you ever expect to be hired for a job or someone to hire you? Whether you think it's good or not, you need to start putting work out there consistently, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, your website, Vimeo, whatever it is, just start when you're making your projects or videos or whatever, put it out there for yeah. people to see. Plain and simple. If you don't put it out there, you're just gonna stay in the shadows. Yeah, that's so true. Um, I'm actually the perfect example of that. You know, I've been doing this for about seven or eight years. It took me like, what, four or five years to start putting work out, man? Jake's been telling me for years, but the moment I started putting, you know, my work out there, things changed. So don't be afraid, guys, because fear is not real. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Like Nike. Nike. Just Sh do it. Shameless plug. Hey, to Nike, you know, uh, Oh, we, we need, need that plug. Shoes. Yeah, we, we need, need some that. shoes. Filmmaker we need some shoes, Nike. Filmmaker Nikes, bro. Come on now. All right, guys. So those are all of our tips and pieces of advice for how to make it as a filmmaker and videographer and video production. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions at all, something we didn't cover or something that you're not quite sure about, please leave a comment below. I'm here to help you guys. I love you know, talking to kids. I, I just spoke at my high school today and was kind of kicking them game on how I got started. I mean, how I was in the same position they were in. I was just a little high school kid who liked making videos and now I do it for a living. So if you have any comments, questions, let me know below. Hopefully this helps some of you guys pursue your passions. And uh, yeah, that's all really I had to say. So that's all we had to say. That's Again, it. hopefully this video helped. Yeah. Leave a like, comment, whatever. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'm Jacob Owens for the Buff Nerds. This is Will. And what are we? We're out. Ah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>